What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show. Thanks very much for clicking on this video. Basically today, we're gonna to break down nine of my very best sold sales items. I really wanna highlight another featured reseller of the week doing some really good things out there. And then I wanna go into my weekly sales numbers just to let you know how I'm going. If you're a regular viewer, there's no different to the format today. If you are here for the first time, I do three videos right here on YouTube every single week talking about my journey as a full-time reseller. I'm only just sort of starting out as a full-time reseller, but I really wanna grow and scale the business that I'm working on. And I really wanna document that journey right here on YouTube. So if you're here for the first time and you haven't yet subscribed, do that. But a great way to support the channel for anybody out there is to give this video a quick like. It's very, very much appreciated. Let's dive into it. My first item that I wanna take you through is a piece of furniture that I was able to sell on Facebook Marketplace for a few dollars. Let's get into it. Let's start the episode with this black entertainment unit that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace for just $50, right in the blueprint of how I like to buy my furniture, nothing with any damage and around the $50 price point. So I was really wrapped to get my hands on this one. It did take a little while for me to actually get around to giving this one a clean and listing it on Facebook Marketplace, but I really do wish I did it a little bit sooner because this is sold within the space of just 30 minutes. I bought it for 50 and I've gone ahead and I've sold it for $150. Now, there wasn't a lot wrong with this. There was no damage on it whatsoever. It was solid hardwood. It did have the old CD case to it as well. So there was a, a bit of old schoolness about this one, but uh, sure enough, the person's come around within the space just half an hour and I've made $100 profit. I did actually document the way this sale went down on Facebook Marketplace in a video that I put out on Tuesday. So if you haven't watched that one yet and you are into selling on Facebook Marketplace, definitely go and check that one out. Uh, but this is really just a blueprint example of how I like to do my furniture. Buy for 50, sell for 150, put a hundred bucks in my profit. So uh, I was stoked with this one and uh, wrapped to come away with a pretty good win there on the furniture piece. My only furniture sale of the week. So I was happy to get it. Next item up was a fun one. I went into the Adidas factory outlet center about, well, it was about 83 days ago to be fair. And uh, I bought these Adidas Alpha Bounce Plus U men's running shoes. Now, I do like to do a little bit of retail arbitrage. There's definitely a difference in the profit margins that you can get out of it. You're obviously spending a lot more money as opposed to a thrift store. So I always like to look for items that are 70% off their retail price. And then I try to list the item 30% off the retail price and I take out the 40% profit margin. So an example of that was these running shoes. I bought them for $50 and I've gone ahead and listed them for $90. And in the end, I took an offer on negotiation. They have sold for 80 bucks. But that $30 profit out of the $80 that the item is sold for works out to about a profit margin of 37%. So right in the ballpark of how I like to operate when I do retail is 30 to 40% of a profit margin is a pretty good result. And sure enough, I've been able to profit $30 on a pair of running shoes, which is what I always like to do, whether it's retail or whether it's thrifted. So very cool result there. Look, it did take a little while to sell, 83 days. But if you haven't done too much retail arbitrage, that's kind of the way I go about things. So I'm definitely realizing when it comes to Facebook Marketplace, there's certain items that can just go on to sell really well. There's almost like a list of bread and butter items for Facebook Marketplace that I'm slowly putting together. I might put out a video about it, just items that I know that I can put on a marketplace. I don't have to worry about the fees of eBay and they just go on to sell. Certain items don't, but certainly certain items do. This is one of them. The, the, Boxing gloves and the focus pads. Now, these were really cool. They were hot pink color. They were in the local op shop for just $4, but I've sold quite a number of them now on Facebook Marketplace. These have gone on to sell for 30 bucks. I've made a $26 profit. They sold within the space of a month, so a really quick time frame. And uh, I've just sold quite a number of them. So I'm always looking out for these in the op shops. People are looking to get fit. This is a great way to get fit out in the local parks where you're not having to pay for your gym memberships. Uh, or even if you are going to local boxing classes as well, the focus pads and the boxing gloves. You can make around 30 to $40 on them. Uh, this was a really good brand. The brand was Everlast, uh, which is a good brand to look out for. Uh, so I knew I'd get sort of top end dollar and 30 bucks on marketplace for these. I thought was a pretty good result. Now, there's a bit of a story around this next item, which is why I wanted to put into today's episode. But these Converse women's casual shoes. Now, I do sell quite a little bit of the Converse brand. I, I just like to buy it. I think it's a good brand. It holds up. It can sort of last the test of time. So I'm always buying the Converse shoes. Um, but it's the way that I bought these shoes that I wanted to talk about today. I put up a listing on Facebook Marketplace saying that I was in the market for used and new shoes. And I was happy to pay 
five bucks for a pair of shoes. It was a tactic that I did to basically try and source inventory rather than going out searching for it, have the inventory come to me on Facebook Marketplace. I did an entire video on it and I'm yet to publish it. So I should probably go ahead and do that. But it was a really successful day of going out and sourcing the items from the messages that I'd had come in and, and these were one of them and this was a guy that was selling basically five or six of his pairs of shoes that were all in really good condition that I could sell for upwards of 40 to $50 on Facebook Marketplace. He said he was comfortable with $5 each for the pair of shoes. Uh, so in the end, I paid $30. This was one of them. I think it worked out throughout the day to a $4 purchase for every pair of shoes. And uh, and this one's gone on to sell for $47.95. So a, a good little tactic there with the use of Facebook Marketplace to kind of reverse engineer what you're looking for and put it out into the world and say, I'm looking for used shoes. Do you have any? Because um, the inventory that I was able to get out of that day was pretty cool. And um, this was just an example of one that's gone on to sell. It's made my profit of $30.50 and it's sold within the space of 11 days. So just by just changing the mindset of how I'm operating on Facebook Marketplace has caused me to obviously make this sale and get the $30 profit, which is always what I like to get with a pair of shoes. Here's another item which has got me thinking. We had these lying around the house. They were the top floor golf balls. Now, this was a brand new box and they were all individually packaged up. There were 12 golf balls and I've ended up selling these for $29.97. So 30 bucks for 12 brand new golf balls. Now, that sale, it was in the space of seven days. It's really got me starting to think, I've got a couple of local golf courses around the corner. If I'm able to somehow source through local op shops, garage sales, or even going out to the local golf course and getting my hands on some used golf balls, if I gave them a really good clean, I think I'd be able to sell them for about a dollar each, uh, maybe potentially even more depending on the brand of golf ball. It's just got me thinking. I was really happy to see this sale come through in a quick space of time within the space of just a week. Look, I've only profited $18.87 off this exact item, but it's just got me thinking moving forward, what if you were to get maybe say 100 golf balls and get them at a cheap price of you know even $30 to $40? I think you could probably go on to sell them for a hundred bucks. Um, look, let me know in the comments below, have you guys done any golf ball selling? Is it a good item to put a bit of focus on? Because I, I really do think off that sale that I could actually start to put uh, some time and effort into this and, and maybe make a couple of dollars. Hey, really cool sale this next one. A pair of Nike Hypervenon men's footy boots. Now, when I bought these in the thrift, I just knew that I was gonna get a really fast sale on this at a really top end price. Um, look, space of four days, these Hypervenoms have gone on to sell for $57 and 50 cents. Now, I've put in this little uh, little tab here that you're looking at that it was a cost of $5. I actually think it might've been a little bit more. I think it was about 10 to $12 from memory. But um, the average cost of goods out of that haul was only $5. So that's why I put that in there. Uh, the postage was $7.20. The fees were $7.48. So I've profited $37.82. A little bit more than what I'd normally like to profit on a pair of shoes. But look, obviously the footy uh, season is just around the corner. So that's why I talk about footy boots a lot. Obviously year round, they're a great item. But if you can really focus your time and attention into that space over the next four weeks, uh, hopefully you're going to get some pretty good results out of it. So um, these white Nike Hypervenoms, the footy boot category, $57.50 from a sale price is a pretty good one. Now guys, I put this item into a what sold video about two weeks ago, but I wanted to put it back in because I've sold yet another Reese plumbing t-shirt. Now I've sold, well, first of all, I bought six of these in an op shop. They were all in basically like new condition. I don't think that ever been worn. Um, I've bought them for $5 each. I paid $30 all up and I've listed every single one of them between $42.50 and $45 each on eBay. Now, after 16 days, I've now sold four out of the six t-shirts and they've all sold without an offer. Full asking price of either $42.50 or $45. Now this one was a women's shirt that I sold for $42.50. Uh, I've ended up profiting $25 basically off this Reese plumbing t-shirt and it's not for the first time. Four out of six have sold for, I've made basically $100 profit on these Reese plumbing t-shirts. They are a real bolo item and uh, really unassuming when you're in the thrift. You probably wouldn't think that there would be any money in these if you're just scrolling through the rack, but um, they do go on to sell and they sell fast and they sell without any negotiation. They just move. 
So I thought I'd put it again into today's episode because if you do find it, grab it. I've made $25 on a t-shirt, which is just ridiculous. Another example here of just having a look around the house for some items that you no longer need. And I've got my sister to thank for this one because this is a pair of her uh, Lunar Racer running shoes that uh, she no longer needed. They were in very good condition. She's a bit of a sneakerhead. She's got quite a number of shoes and she no longer wears these. She said, whack them up on eBay, see how you go, take the profit. So I'll put these up for $43 and that's what they've sold for. The, the fees and the postage, again, there it is, my profit of $30, just how I like to operate. Um, they've sold in the space of 41 days, so they did sit around for a little bit, but look, you can't really go wrong with a pair of Nike shoes, and if I'm able to profit my $30, uh, I'm always happy at the end of the day. So these have uh, moved pretty well. Look, I wanted to put into today's episode, um, more so for the fact that it was just an item that I found lying around the house. So if you are just getting into the reselling game and, and you kind of want to learn the ropes, I would always say, just start by having look around the house, find some items you no longer need, and then put them on a Facebook marketplace because then you also don't have the fees to worry about. And then you can sort of grow into putting it into eBay and then dealing with the postage and the rest that comes along with it. But um, awesome little find there, found it lying around the house and then pushed it for $43 on eBay. Now I've had a bit of luck recently with the book series and whenever I'm buying books, I'm always looking for bundles and I'm always looking for full sets because that goes on to sell very well on eBay. Obviously you wanna find the right authors, yes, um, but if you are finding bulk, of any series, um, you're always standing a better chance than buying individual books and, and trying to move them. Uh, these were the good ones, the Andy Griffith uh, Treehouse series, and um, these were comping pretty well on eBay, obviously why I picked them up, but I was also able to get them for just a dollar a book. So seven paperback books for just $7. I thought that was a pretty good entry price. And then I've gone ahead and I've sold them for $44.97 on eBay. They moved in a pretty quick space of time. These moved in 19 days. Uh, it wasn't a full set by any means, but it was a large enough bundle to be able to get a decent resale price. And uh, when you take out fees and postage, $22.32. So look, I thought that was pretty good, turning a, a $1 book basically into $32 worth of profit when you sell them as a bundle of seven. Um, sold in the space of 19 days, obviously, as well. So a really fast turnaround, and that's not uncommon for those book bundles. So look, it wasn't a huge profit margin. You can definitely make more on book bundles, but I, I just thought I'd put it in there because it was yet another sale that I've had this week in the book series. Uh, it's one of the four major components that I focus on, books, DVDs, shoes, and clothes. So this was probably one of the few books that I was able to have move in this uh, week, but um, still, I was happy to get the $22 done. So they were my nine best sold sales items of the week, guys. I wanted to put a few in there that had a few different stories along with it. Obviously, a bit of retail arbitrage, having a look around around the house, um, some constant movers for me, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed those. Let me know in the comments below, what was your best sold sales item this week? We go into the next segment now, which is our featured reseller of the week. And I really picked those off basically what you guys put in the comments. Let me know in the comments, what is your best sold sales item? Let me know what you sold it for, where you bought it. A bit of a story, it'd be very much appreciated. We've got one today, uh, which I've really wanted to do for the last couple of weeks. And finally, we're able to uh, include her in this week's episode. Uh, Bron Bowman, she uh, goes by Manic to Mindful on YouTube. She's got an awesome YouTube channel. I watch all of her videos. She's pushing the 500 subscriber mark. And she's been really heavily focused around book selling, but I think she's pivoted into clothing a little bit more and a few other bits and pieces, but um, she's an absolute guru when it comes to selling books online. Um, she's also a local Gold Coaster as well. She's just around the corner from me. So Bron, we do really need to go out thrifting at some point soon, but um, she's got a really cool item that I wanted to highlight today as our featured reseller of the week. Um, I'll whack it up here for you to have a look at. It was The Secret Book of Gnomes. Uh, that she's found. So she's a, a mad bookseller. And um, this one, like I had with my tree story book that I spoke of just a minute ago, this is the high end profit that I'm speaking of. She's gone ahead and she sold this one for $120 plus $30 postage. So I'm assuming when you take everything out of it, she's made $100 worth of profit here. She's bought them for just $8 in a local op shop. Now there's 50 books there. So to get them for eight bucks is an unreal result as it is. But um, she did say that they actually only just hit the shelf the minute she walked into the op shop. So I think timing was probably the most crucial aspect of this one. She's been able to nab them straight away and uh, she's made $100 worth of profit. So um, just an awesome result there. Well done, Bron. Uh, I know you're, you're moving into other things, but still focus on your books because you obviously do a very good job with it. Um, so I thought I'd highlight you in today's episode. Go and give her a sub on YouTube, Manic to Mindful, 
unapologetic documentation of how she goes about things. She just doesn't care what anyone thinks. And I think that's a really, really cool thing about her. So I do love watching her videos. Go and check it out. Give her a sub. Let her know that I brought you there. And uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy her content. Well done, Bron. Great sale. Thought I'd include you in this week's episode. All right, guys, let's have a look at the weekly sales numbers to let you know how I'm going. Uh, we're looking at February 8 to February 14. Let's pull the table up. Items sold 36 this week, which is a little less than what I've normally done of recent weeks, but uh, the cost of goods was $317.30. Total sales this week, $1,164 with a profit of basically $850. Now, I always like to hit around $1,000 in profit, so I am a few dollars short this week, a profit margin of 72%. So I think a bit of retail arbitrage and a bit of... Um, Furniture selling has brought that profit margin down from a, a thrifted profit margin of around normally about 80%. Last week, it was mainly thrift items that I sold. I hit an 82% profit margin. Retail arbitrage and furniture brings it down to 72%. So I'm not too disappointed there. I know why that has dropped slightly, but um, still 72% is not a bad profit margin. Um, look, this week's been an interesting one. The, the start of the week, we were, we, were, we were flying. We were going gangbusters. The numbers were high. It was looking to be an all-time week. And uh, then from about Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even so far today, I've not seen a lot on eBay come through. It's been very, very quiet. We're talking maybe two or three sales, and I'm normally averaging about seven sales a day on eBay at the moment. So I'd say my sales have probably been cut in half uh, over the last four days, which has been very frustrating. But um, I don't think you can really go ahead and change too much. I think you've just got to stay to your processes, hope that you get a 15-odd sale item week or sale item day uh, over the next few days to sort of balance it out. But um, I think this week I've probably done a couple less uh, listings than I would like. I think I've probably averaged around 12 listings a day and I do need to be doing about 15 a day. So I've probably dropped the ball there. I've listed every day, but I've probably just done a couple less than what I want to do. So maybe that's the reason why I've dropped a little bit in my weekly sales on eBay. But um, I'll need to get back onto it. I'll need to make sure priority for next week, 15 listings every single day, no matter what. Um, and we'll see if that changes anything. But um, look... You're not always going to get the all-time weeks. You're going to have the bit of a dip. And, and this week, it probably has been a bit of a dip to get to where I need to be. It needs to be upwards of, you know, two, two and a half grand every single week. So, you know, I'm probably half of where I really want to be based on what these numbers were this week. So there's a lot of work left still to go. Um, I've really got to look into buying more items off Facebook Marketplace. That's kind of dropped off a little bit. I've really just relied on thrifting. And that is a great space to be, but I really do think you got to diversify. I've got to do a wholesale deal. If anyone out there has any wholesale opportunities, opportunities i'm ready to buy so let me know in the comments below or dm me on instagram because i just need to buy bulk um, and then the other thing is obviously um, no that's everything facebook uh, wholesale and then just keep thrifting um, so yeah plenty of work plenty of learnings uh, still to come so hopefully you're enjoying the journey because that's what i'm trying to do here with this youtube channel is just document every step along the way show you how it how it goes for me and uh, hopefully as I learn, I can help you guys learn as well. That's sort of why I'm doing it. But um, if you enjoyed this video and you are still here now, remember to hit that like button because it's a great way to support the YouTube channel. I cannot thank you enough for that. Also can't thank you enough for your general support of the channel. Any comments, likes, um, watch time, uh, it is incredibly appreciative. So thank you very much. Hope you've had an awesome week of selling yourself and your numbers are doing a little bit better than mine. And uh, I do look forward to uh, catching you in the next episode, which will be Tuesday. We're going to do something a little bit different on Tuesday. So I hope you look forward to, uh, to tuning into that one. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you in the next.